For more content and production, please subscribe to our channel and give us a like. Thank you. We'll begin. In this episode of the Torah Effects, we'll take a close look at Genesis chapter 1 verse 16 states, And Yahweh made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day, and the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also. This verse is often interpreted as a straightforward account of Yahweh's creation of the sun, moon, and stars. The sun, being the greater light, governs the day, while the moon, the lesser light, rules the night. This interpretation seems simple enough. It aligns with our everyday experience of day and night. The sun's dominance during the day and the moon's presence at night are undeniable. This understanding has shaped religious and cultural perspectives for centuries. However, a deeper dive into the original Hebrew text and the historical context reveals a more nuanced and intriguing perspective. This alternative interpretation challenges conventional wisdom and prompts us to reconsider our understanding of this foundational biblical passage. By exploring the hidden depths of Genesis chapter 1 verse 16, we embark on a journey of discovery, questioning long-held assumptions and uncovering a richer, more profound understanding of the cosmos and our place within it. The original Hebrew text of Genesis chapter 1 verse 16 uses the phrase Mar Gadol for the greater light and Mar Katan for the lesser light. Mer translates directly to light bearer or luminary. This suggests that the verse might not be referring to the inherent brightness of the celestial bodies themselves, but rather their function as markers of time. The Hebrew word for stars used in this verse is kohavim. Interestingly, ancient Hebrew lacked specific terms for the moon simply because it's not a celestial body, only a satellite. These celestial objects were often referred to by their function as greater light and lesser light, respectively. This understanding opens up the possibility that the verse is not merely describing the creation of celestial objects, but emphasizing their role in timekeeping. The greater light and lesser light become celestial markers, delineating day and night and providing a framework for measuring time. This subtle shift in perspective has profound implications for our understanding of the verse and its broader significance within the creation narrative. To fully grasp the potential discrepancies in the interpretation of Genesis chapter 1 verse 16, we must consider the historical context in which the Bible was written. Ancient Babylonian cosmology, which predates the Old Testament, heavily influenced the ancient Israelites. The Babylonians were advanced astronomers and developed sophisticated systems for tracking celestial movements. Their cosmology, however, differed significantly from the heliocentric model we understand today. They believed in a geocentric universe with Earth at the center and all other celestial bodies, including the Sun and Moon, revolving around it. This Babylonian worldview, with its emphasis on celestial movements and their impact on earthly affairs, permeated the ancient Near East. It's plausible that remnants of this geocentric perspective found their way into biblical texts, including Genesis chapter 1, verse 16. This influence might have contributed to the interpretation of the greater light and lesser light as literal objects rather than celestial markers of time. If we accept the premise that Genesis chapter 1 verse 16 emphasizes the time-keeping function of celestial bodies, the roles of the sun and stars become particularly significant. The sun's movement across the sky naturally defines day and night. Its cyclical journey provides a clear and consistent unit of time, the solar day. The stars, on the other hand, offer a means of tracking longer periods. Their positions in the night sky change subtly throughout the year, creating recognizable patterns and constellations. 
By observing these patterns, ancient civilizations could track seasons, predict agricultural cycles, and mark the passage of time over extended periods. The verse clearly states that Yahweh created these celestial bodies for this very purpose. Let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years, Genesis chapter 1 verse 14. This reinforces the idea that the emphasis is on their role as celestial timekeepers, guiding human understanding of time's passage. Toto Raba. If you like this video, please give us a like and subscribe to our channel. There's more content in production. Thank you.